In this expectation, we're going to look at expanding and compressing the graph. So we've looked at moving it left and right. Now we're going to look at vertically expanding and compressing the graph. And then we'll look at horizontally expanding and compressing the graph. So here's a basic graph, y equals x squared. Let's look at what would happen if we took the x value in this equation and we replaced it with 2x. If we took the x value and replaced it with 2x, then this is what our equation would look like. And if we take this equation y equals 2x squared and we enter it into our graphing calculator, then this is what it looks like. Here's what our graph looks like. So what has happened here? It looks like our graph has gotten skinnier or has been horizontally compressed. Let's look at the points here. This point here had an x value of negative 2 and a y value of 4. The y value is still the same, it's at 4, but instead of the x value being at negative 2, it's now at negative 1. Here, this x value was at negative 1, now it's at negative a half. Here, this x value was 0, it's still at 0. This x value was at 1, now the point is at an x value of a half. This x value is 2, now the x value is 1. So all of the points on here have the exact same y value, but their x values are half as what they used to be. So it looks like when we take x and we replace the x with 2x, the effect is, is that all of the x coordinates in the original graph are one half of what they used to be. Let's look and see if the reverse is true. Let's see what happens if we take x and we replace it with say something less than 1, like 1 third x. So in the previous example, when we replaced x with 2x, we found that all the x coordinates were 1 half of what they used to be. Let's see if when we replace x with a third x, if the x values grow by a multiple of 3. Let's take a look at its graph. And here it is, and we see this is exactly what has happened. When we have taken the x value and replaced it with one-third x, the effect of the graph is it has been horizontally expanded by a factor of three. In other words, all of the x values are three times what they used to be. This x value here was at negative two, so we had the point negative two, six, sorry, negative two, four. Now the x has been multiplied by three, so we're at negative six and the same y value of four. Here we are at negative one, one, now we're at negative 3, 1. If you take an x value of 0 and multiply it by 3, you're still at 0, so this point's unchanged. This x value was 1, it had to be multiplied by 3, now it's at 3, same y value of 1. And this x value that used to be 2 has been multiplied by 3, now we have to go up to 6 to obtain our y value of 4. So when we replace x with 1 third x, the effect is, is that the gra graph is expanded horizontally by a factor of three. The x values are three times what they used to be. Let's review horizontal expansions and compressions. If x is replaced with a coefficient, the coefficient is the number in front of x, so if x is replaced with a coefficient greater than one, then the graph will be horizontally compressed. For example, if x is replaced with three x, then the graph of the function is horizontally compressed by a factor of one-third. This means that all the x values in the function are one-third of what they used to be. If x is replaced with a coefficient that is less than one, then the graph will be horizontally expanded. For example, if x is replaced with one-fifth x, then the graph of the function is horizontally expanded by a factor of five. This means that all of the x values in the function are five times greater than what they used to be. Here's another example. At the top up here, I've graphed a function y equals f of x. You don't know what its equation is, but I've given you a sketch of what the graph looks like. So here's our function y equals f of x. If we were asked to graph the function y equals f of 2x, 
then we would realize that in the equation, whatever it is, the x has been replaced with 2x. That would mean that there's a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. Or, all x values are one half what they used to be. So we would pick our key points here, I've got four of them on this graph, and we would simply take each of the points, this x value here is at minus four, we will move that point to minus two. Keep the same y value, that point would move from here to here. This x value was at minus 2. You need to take half of that. It will be now here at minus 1. This x value was at 1. We need to take half of it. It will now be at a half. Notice how I'm keeping the y values all the same. Here we have an x value of 2. We take half of that. We'll move that over to 1 and we will now connect the dots. And what I have sketched here is the graph of the function y equals f of 2x, which is the same graph as this one, except all the x-coordinates are one-half what they used to be. Here we have a, another example, y equals f of x. Here's the sketch of the function here, and there's five key points on the function. Again, we don't know the equation, but we have its graph. And we need to sketch the new function y equals f of 1 half x. So we look and see, the x value was replaced with 1 half x. And when we replace x with a half x, that is a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. Which means we need to double all of our x values. So here's an x value of minus 1. It will now be at minus 2. So minus 2 and the y value was minus 3, which is unchanged. Here's an x value of 0. I need to multiply that by 2, so that point is not going to change. Here's an x value of 1. I double that, it becomes 2. And I put my dot. Here's an x value of 2. I need to double that, that becomes 4. Here's an x value of 3. I need to double that to become 6. And my y value is minus 3, so down 1, 2, oops, 3. And let's connect our dots. So, here's our graph of y equals f of x. Here's our graph of y equals f of 1 half x. The same graph as this one, except all the x values are twice as big as what they used to be in our graph of y equals f of x. So that's horizontal expansions and compressions. Let's look now at vertical expansions and compressions. Okay, here's a function that you've seen before, y equals the square root of x. And here's some points that I put on. 0, 0, 1, 1, when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, we get a y value of 2. So we've seen what happens when we replace x with, with 2x, or x with a half x. What happens if we replace y with 2y, or y with a half y? Let's take a look. So when I replace y with 2y, my equation would look like this. Unfortunately, uh, in order to see what this looks like in our graphing calculators, we can't enter functions uh, unless it is simply a y equals function. So we can't have this 2 in here. So we'll just do a little bit of algebra here to isolate y by dividing everything by 2. And we'll get y equals 1 half of root x. Or root x divided by 2, however you want to see it. So we will enter in the, in the calculator y equals 1 half root x and see what we get. There it is. And what's happened here? Well, we still have the same x values at 0, 1, and 4. At 0, 1, and 4. But our y values have changed. It looks like they're one half of what they used to be. Half of zero is still zero, all right. But a half of one is a half, and a half of two is one. So just like when we were dealing with horizontal expansions and compressions, when we replaced x with 2x, that was a horizontal uh, compression by a factor of a half. Same thing here. When we replaced the y with 2y, 
we've got a vertical compression by a factor of a half. Let's see what happens if we replace y with a fraction, such as one-third y. So replacing y with a third y, our equation would become one-third y equals root x. And in order to figure out what this is in our graphing calculator, we would need to multiply by 3. So these two equations are exactly the same. We need to write it this way so we can enter it in the graphing calculator. And here is what our graph would look like. And it looks like the same holds true here. If we replace y with a third y, our graph has expanded vertically by a factor of 3. 0 times 3 was still 0, but 1 times 3 was 3, and this y value that used to be at 2 is now sitting up here at a y value of 6. So when we replace y with a third y, we get a vertical expansion. The graph is vertically expanded by a factor of 3, or all y values are 3 times what they used to be. So let's review our vertical expansions and compressions. If y is replaced with a coefficient greater than 1, then the graph will be vertically compressed. For example, if y is replaced with 4y, then the graph of the function is vertically compressed by a factor of 1 fourth. This means that all y values in the function are 1 quarter of what they used to be. And if y is replaced with a coefficient less than 1, then the graph will be vertically expanded. For example, if y is replaced with 1 half y, then the graph of the function is vertically expanded by a factor of 2. This means that all y values in the function are 2 times greater than what they used to be. Let's consider this example. So here I've given you a graph of what y equals f of x looks like. We don't have the specific equation for f of x, but we have a picture of what its graph is here. And we're going to look at what the graph of this function would look like, y equals 2 f of x. Now you might think, well, there hasn't been any change to y here, but really there has. The 2 that's written on this side of the equation, obviously it has nothing to do with x because it's not attached to x, so x has not been replaced with anything here. But the 2 here, we could actually divide both sides of this equation by 2 and get a new equation that says 1 half y equals f of x. Okay, so these two equations are equivalent. And there is, there has been a replacement with y. y has been replaced with 1 half y. So if you happen to see a number in front of f of x, move it over here to the same side as y, and then you'll know what y has been replaced with. So y has been replaced with a half y. That means we need to vertically expand the y values by a factor of 2. So all y values need to be doubled. I've got my key points here. 1, 2, 3. This y value here is at minus 1. I need to double it. Now it's at minus 2. This y value is at 2. I need to double it. It's now at a y value of 4. This y value is at 0. I need to double it. It'll stay at 0. And now I need to simply connect my dots. Now here it's a straight line, so I will draw a straight line between those two points. This has a nice smooth curve to it, so I will draw a nice smooth curve, kind of a nice smooth curve, between those two points. And now this graph here is the same one as this one, except it's been vertically expanded by a factor of 2. All the y values were doubled. Let's look at one more example. Here's another function, y equals f of x. And let us consider y equals 1 half f of x. We realize that this 1 half can be moved to this side by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. And so in the difference between this equation and this equation is that y has been replaced with 2y. That should be a vertical compression 
by a factor of one half. So all of our y values should be one half of what they used to be. Here's three key points on the graph. I'm going to take their y values and I'm going to multiply them by a half or take half of what they used to be. This y value is at 2. Now it'll be at 1. This y value was down at negative 1, 2, 3, 4. It's now only going to be down at negative 2. This y value was at 1. Now it's going to be at a half. The same x values in this graph are the same x values over here. I connect my dots. I have vertically compressed this graph by a factor of one half. And that's what we would do if we replaced the y with 2y.